early, isn't it? I'm sorry. I thought you'd appreciate this. I do. I'm sorry. I had a rough night. I don't know what time it was when I finally went to sleep. But, uh... So, uh, it's really bad. I don't know. You talk to one doctor, you get one version, you talk to another, and it's something else. I don't know what to believe. I'll tell you one thing, he's going to get the best treatment there is, no matter how much it costs. Frank, I realise you might not want to hear this right now. But why aren't you so keen to help Zoe? There's no comparison. The boy's been crippled. Just the same. Both your children are at critical points in their lives. You could help them both. I'm sorry. I've got enough to think about with Chris. So Zoe's golden opportunity has to be missed through no fault of her own. It's a lot of money. I'm going to lend her the money for the partnership. All you have to do is show Zoe the same support and interest you show Chris. Kim, and before you bring his injury up again, it's always the same. Everything for Christopher. It's not fair on Zoe. Oh. Oh. Are you going to do this every morning when we're married? If you like. Uh, well, no. I'm sorry, Alan. I, no, I don't think I do like. You see, it takes me all my time just to face a cup of coffee. Oh. Right. <clears throat> oh, where's well, not one, not. Oh. <laughs> you said we should look carefully at everything we took as read before. And we must, if it's going to work between you and me again. I want it to. Me too. There was a lot wrong with our relationship before. I'm sorry. I'm not blaming you. It was just as much my fault. But it's, it's too easy to let things drift. Even when you know they're not right, you let them go. Take it for granted they sort themselves out. Not this time. Let's not make any rash promises or any demands on each other. Right now, this is better than either of us could have dreamt of two months ago. Please, think about what I said. we better get started on this guest list. We've got a lot of people to invite. And there's my kids, for a start. And then uh, most of the village. Kim and Frank, Zoe, uh, Kathy and Chris, if you can make it, Nick, the McAllisters. Uh, mm. well, well, you are merrily writing down all your friends. What about mine? Well, well you hardly ever refer to your friends or, or family. I just assumed... Uh... Assumed that I didn't have any. Yes, and I'm sorry. Well, there are a few people I could invite. All right, well, we'll find a way. Uh, well, there's Ruby. Maybe. And uh, Lola. Oh, and there's Shelley, of course. Okay. Have these people got any surnames? No, the clients only call them by the first names. I called myself Sammy. Oh. What, what, you, you, you mean they were... Well, they were friends of mine, Alan. Yes, well, of course, well, please do invite them, if that's what you like. <laughs> I'm only teasing you. <laughs> we'll invite all my homeless friends from the drop-in centre instead. Do you want to wet again? Yeah, but don't say anything to her about it, though. She's embarrassed enough as it is. Of course not. And don't get egg on that application form. It won't make a very good impression on the magistrates. Do you think we should take her to see somebody? No, she's all right. Perhaps we should all see the therapist. I mean, you never know how these last few weeks are going to come out. We don't need to see therapists. I mean, as long as we're here, together, we'll be fine. Yeah? I'm looking for Eric Pollard. He does live here. Yeah. Yeah, he's at work. Oh, I missed him. That's a shame. Where does he work, Michael? He works... How do you know him? him? Uh, he's told me about you. We're old friends. I was sorry to hear about your mother, by the way. It's a dreadful business. Yeah. Well, uh, he's at work. Hot and market. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, who shall I say call? Oh, it doesn't matter. Morning. Oh. How much are you putting them up this time, Vic? I'm beginning to think Beckendale doesn't deserve us, Viv. The post office is a vital organ in the body of the village. Cut it out and the village dies. Oh, you're going to have me in tears in a minute. Where would Seth go with his pension if we weren't there? Well, he'd have it paid straight into his bank account. Hasn't got one. Yeah. And then, say he don't turn up one Thursday morning because he's lying on the floor with a broken hip, eh? What direct debit in bank computer's going to spot that, eh? But we would. Mm. And if I'd have known Samson's dad, Wally Eggleton, he wouldn't have lain there stiff as a bolt for four days. Is this just a long-winded way of justifying more outrageous price increases, Vic? If you will look about you, you will see that I have, in fact, decreased my prices. Nobody's buying anything. Reacting to market forces. Exactly. Well, in that case, I'll buy a few things and cook Alan a decent lunch. Because the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Hey, Viv? I thought you came by a completely different route. I'll uh, ignore her. She's got a bit of headache. Can I carry a basket for you? Not unless you want to come all the way to the supermarket in Holland. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Looking for a bargain served in a congenial atmosphere? Not necessarily. You've definitely come to the right place, then. Hi. Oh, hi. I was wondering where you got to this morning. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't mention it. I had to go and see my mum's solicitor. She's left everything to Eric. It is normal for the wife's estate to pass to the husband. Yeah, I know. But why did she have to pick him? Look, Jack mentioned the idea of you living at Emmerdale, and it's fine with me. We'll stop the rent out of your wages. Oh, thanks, Sarah. There's some machinery up at Wally Eggleson's yard I could use at the Heritage Farm. Yeah, but there's a lot more than just old farm stuff up there. This is a treasure trove. It's old motorbikes, cars. Could be worth a lot of money. Maybe I should talk to Mrs. Eggleton, see if she'd take an offer for the lot. The widow Betty? No, that's Seth's province. Oh, no. Perhaps he could make an approach to her on my behalf. Well, I'm uh, collecting him out of hospital this afternoon, so I can have a chat with him then about it, if you want. Keep me in touch. How's Chris, by the way? Oh, I wish I knew. It'd be helpful if the doctors could make up their minds. They would the same. He'd be fine, you'll see. I hope so. So what were you two cooking up between you? Nothing dodgy, I promise. <laughs> Take a berth, all these bits of paper, just so we can sell booze. You know, love, I really think we could make a go at Wally's yard. What? We could rent it from her and then run a scrap business. It's a lot of money in old scrap. One of my mum's cousins was a totter. He used to keep his horse and cart under a railway arch in Deptford. Vic, come down to earth. You're talking about running a scrapyard. You're filling in forms for a liquor licence. So just concentrate on getting this place running properly first. I am. I'm just diversifying. That yard's absolutely stuffed with old motors. No, Vic. Ten years from now, you'll never know. And who'll remember? Jack, last night I was hard on you and Sarah. It was unfair of me. I'll well, forget it. It's been tough for all of us. Yeah, it's just this turning the ventilator. It's, it's too risky. Not if there's nothing left of it. I know you blame yourself for what happened to Mark, but you mustn't feel responsible for Mark. Nobody could have done more than you did. And now it's time to see what's what. And, well, if necessary, to let her go gently. What do you reckon we ought to do then? I think we ought to have one more talk with the doctor. Ask him if he thinks she can make it on her own. If the ventilator's turned off. And if she can't? Oh, I'm on mend, love. No thanks to this lot, they chucked me out. It's only a few days ago I were on the table under a surgeon's knife on threshold of oblivion. Oh, dear. Poor you. Any sign of Vic? No. Oh. He said he'd give me a lift back home. I suppose I'd have to face media circus on my own. The what? No. Photographers. Keen on grabbing a picture opportunity. It's people. They're the trouble, saying things, doing stuff, but even when they know that it hurts. 
But you can't talk, so you can't hurt. Hey. I never wanted to come here, you know. My parents, they don't give you no choice, do they? They just tell you do things. Well, I never wanted to come here. I've got some great mates back home. They make you... And then what happens? Half, six, half, seven, half, eight, half, nine. One, ten, half. I'm going to run the stables here. Nothing else I can do. <laughs> Horses are the only thing I know anything about. <laughs> oh, and you and I must talk to my solicitor about this loan. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Oh, yes. Well, I better start looking for suitable premises then. I've been thinking about that as well. <gasps> and all here. There's masses of room. Getting ready. Well, I'm ready. What you lost? I was expecting Gunning and his mob. Hello, oh, Morris. Hello, Eric. <laughs> this is uh, this is unexpected. That's pretty obvious. I got a little tired of sitting around waiting for you to pay your debts, so I thought I'd take a little trip and see what was holding you up. This isn't, uh, this isn't the best place to talk. No? Seems all right to me. But then I just require a simple answer, Eric. Have you got my money? I'm waiting for the insurance money to come through. As soon as it arrives, <laughs> there'd be no problem. So the answer's no? Well, as I said... Yes, Eric, I heard you. All right. I'll give you another month. If not, I'll come and see you again. And I won't come alone. Understand? It'll be through by then. <laughs> don't worry. I'm not worried, Eric. But then, I don't have to be. No. Goodbye. Be here. He's busy at the moment. Doing what? Exploiting someone else's grief for the sake of a few thousand extra copies. He's just a journalist doing his job. Yeah? Getting your picture splattered all over the paper. I'm not a monster. I'm as upset as anyone about what's happened. I've lost a lot too, you know. My house was flattened. Really? Well, I lost my brother. I'm sorry about Mark. I really am. But at least now you know what it's like to lose someone you love. I felt sure they'd have been here waiting for me. Such is the fickle nature of the yeah. Fourth Estate. Yeah, and those press people just pick you up and drop you as it suits them. Yeah, that's what I've just said. There we are, Seth. Welcome home. It's on the house. Oh. Well, thank you, Mr. Turner. Beautiful. Rachel, can I have a word? What? Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Is it about is it about the job? Yes. I've got it. Yes. Brilliant. Hours and pairs discussed. Look, can I say something to you? Just just one thing. Yeah, of course. Rachel, I think you are suffering from depression. Clinical depression. Now that's not surprising. Surprise would be if you weren't. But I think you might need treatment. Will you think about it? Yeah. Good. One other thing. I thought you said just one thing. <laughs> yes, well, poetic license. <laughs> I think you should go back to university as soon as possible. There's no point. Well, that's what you say now, but with help, you'll change your mind, I hope. Oh, come on. There's no future for you in being a doctor's receptionist. As far as I'm concerned, this is a temporary appointment. Till I can find somebody better qualified. We'll see. Thanks. When do I start? Surgery opens at 9, say, 8.30. Well, you're certainly big enough. 
One large room for the waiting area and reception and a smaller back room for the surgery. It just needs a splash of paint. I'll help you. <laughs> you make it sound easy. <laughs> I've got to sell it to Dad yet. Uh, leave that to me. I know what you're thinking. I don't really deserve a second chance after what happened a year ago. No. Actually, I was thinking I owe you an apology for the way I behaved towards you at first. I don't blame you. I'd have done the same thing myself. I just feel protective towards him. I never want to see him like he was this time last year. Well, Frank and I are agreed. We start again from scratch and take nothing for granted. I'd like you and I to do the same. I'd like that too. Good. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Frank said you'd both be here. Is this a good time? It's a brilliant time. <laughs> oh, in that case, I'm trying to whip up a bit of support for Alan and Shirley's wedding. Having doubts, I hear. Well, only about the timing of it, whether or not it's tactless to be enjoying yourself at a time of tragedy. The sooner we put that behind us, the better. That's what I think. So Bernard and I are getting everyone together to make it a day they'll never forget. <laughs> what a nice idea. I'm going to get some of the kids from school to do the place up a bit, make the pub look a bit more festive. And I was wondering about transport, um, something a bit different to bring them back to the wool pack. Well, Vic Wins is your man. He knows all about cars. On your own? No, I'm waiting for Gavin. Be careful. If they see you talking to me, they'll ostracise you too. See, what I want is for you to arrange via Mrs Egerton for me to rent Wally's yard. The pot's empty. Okay. Honestly, I'm sick of the way everybody's treating me. Little digs, looks. Well, look at it from their point of view. I'm up to here with what the people in this village think of me. I've lost my home and the wine bar. And I'm going to take whatever I can from now on. If I can earn some money from this disaster, then fine. It's not better than Gavin and his paper. Oh, be real. We all stand to profit from it. And why not? We've all been affected by it. Why shouldn't we make something out of the ghouls that come and gawp at us? Because you can't put a price on suffering, Lynn. You can't blame people for the way they feel about you knocking around with that Gavin. <sighs> it's got nothing to do with them. I'm having a great time. He's fun. And he's the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. You've changed. Yeah. From now on, I've got two priorities. Peter and me. And I don't care what people think of me. Excuse me. It seems reasonable to me. You're not the one that's the first Betty Eggleton. She's a very demanding woman, is Betty. I can't tackle her for less than 50%. Not in my delicate condition. 10% or I'll tell the income tax people about your undeclared earnings. I haven't got any. Ah, oh, but you will have. Me. A sick man only just out of hospital. Right. Now, listen. For the minute, we keep this between ourselves. If Viv asks you, you don't know nothing, right? Oh, you, you don't want her to know you're doing this, is that it? Right. Uh, well, in that case, price has just gone up again to 50%. Inland revenue. Viv. Hi, Gavin. Gavin? See, you don't want to know me now. They just use you when it suits them. I'm fishing chip wrapping paper now. Now, is there anybody that we've overlooked? No, I don't think so. What about your daughter? Well, I wrote to her. I told her I wanted to bury the hardship. You invited her. And? Wrote back. Wouldn't come to your wedding if her life depended on it. <laughs> All words to that effect. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What the heck? What can I do you for? I thought you'd want some more photos for your paper. No, mate. You've had your 15 minutes of fame. Is that it? Exploit an old man and then discard him. He's old news. I'd like to wipe that smug smile off your face, mate. You wouldn't be the first to try. That's quite enough. Sorry, Alan, but the uh, stink of rubbish always brings the worst out of me. I think you both should finish your drinks and leave, don't you? I've got to go home in a minute. It'll be tea time. They'll be looking for me. Tea time and then bedtime. I hate bedtime. Going to sleep. I'll try and stay awake, but I can't. I've been drinking coffee and that. 
but it doesn't help. I still go to sleep. I still dream. What was he wanted? Something a bit special for Alan and Shirley to come back from the registry office in. Any ideas? I've got the very thing. Put the lights on, Robert. Mum! What are you doing here? What time is it? About five o'clock. Oh, God, not again. Scott! That's a nice surprise. Well, we'd like to keep our eye on things down here. I see you've got the scaffolding up. Yes, yes, they, they start on the work the day after the wedding, so they'll be working away while we're flat out somewhere. Oh, yeah. In some, you know, some bathing. If there's anything you require for the reception, just let me know. Do you a very nice price, of course. Oh, I've seen your prices, and there's nothing nice about them. No, no, before we go any further, it's a change of plan price-wise. From now on, I'm going to be operating what's known as a two-tier system. Oh, yeah. And what's that, then? Well, it's one price for the villagers and another for the tourists. Oh, and which one are we going to be? Higher or lower? <laughs> I see Lucretia Borges in again. Oh, don't set her off. At least she's quiet. And that slime bag's not with her. You mustn't keep Zoe waiting, Frank. She needs an answer about setting up at the Heritage Farm. All right. I won't keep her waiting. As far as I'm concerned, she's welcome. Thank you. It's my benefit to have a resident vet on site. Yes, I know. But just the same. Mm. Oh, I've just about given up on you. I have to take me down walking. Walking from where, sir? Oh, uh, just up the road. Oh, listen. Same again, honey. Good news, Frank. Oh? Me and Seth have arranged a deal with Wally Eggleton's widow, so we should be able to let you have all that, you know, farm equipment, very decent price. Great. Have a drink. Yeah, fine, please. Same for you, sir? Uh, no, I'll have a large brandy. I'll oh. keep my strength up for Betty. Oh! <laughs> Hi. I thought you were going to stand me up. Nah, I'd never do that. <laughs> I believe in being direct with my women, which is why I've dropped in to say cheerio. Why? Where are you going? Home, love. The editor's pulled the expense on this one. I'm done with you lot. I can get back to civilization at long last. Thank God. The story's finished. So there's nothing to keep me here anymore, is there? Been fun. I'll see you around, eh? If they did switch off the machine, uh, we'll know for sure, won't we? One way or the other. Somebody would have to be with her, though. Day and night, in case she comes round. We'd have to be here. She'd do the same for us. She did. When we were little and we were poorly. She'd sit up all night. Nothing worse than waking up in the dark and being alone, she'd say. Yeah. Well, you won't be alone, Ma. Who do we talk to, then? <laughs> 